All right, this is 2014, starting with number 7. Um, we've got a piecewise defined function here. Remember what this means. It just means when you have x values less than or equal to 3, this is where you plug them in. If you have x values greater than 3, this is where you plug them in. If f is continuous at 3, what's the value of k? Well, if it's going to be continuous, then at that place where it switches over, you have to get the same thing. They have to join up. This is the equals part, so there's like a closed part here, a point, and then this is the open part, so there's like an open circle and a point, and either those join up or they don't. If they do join up and it's continuous, in other words, if there's no jump there, then these two things have to be equal when you plug in 3. So I plug in 3 to this, plug in 3 to this, And we get 3 squared, that's 11, equals 18 plus k. So it looks like k would have to be equal to negative 7 to make that true. Number 8, finding an uh, antiderivative here. This is a definite integral. So let's see, what does this look like? Well, it doesn't look like something I'm just supposed to know. It looks like... If the next thing you should consider is u substitution. So if the u was the what's inside here, 1 plus 8x squared, then the du would be 16x dx. And I have the x there, right? So that means I need to insert a 16 here to get that to match up to this. And that means I need a 1 16th on the outside to balance everything out. So this integral turns into 1 16th times the integral. I need my new u numbers now. Plugging 0 into this, I get 1. And plugging uh, 1 into this, I get 9. And then this whole thing, what does it turn into? Let's see. So 16x dx, that all just turns into du. And then this turns into the square root of u or u to the one-half, better for calculus purposes. So what's the antiderivative of this? I bump the exponent up by 1, and I divide by the new exponent, so that's a 2 thirds. That 2 thirds here, that's a constant. You can put it either inside or outside this, because it's a constant, and it will just distribute through. I like to put it on the outside so I don't have to deal with it on the inside. So those cancel, that gives me an eighth there, so I got one over 24. And then on the inside, I've got nine to the three halves. So what's nine to the three halves? That's the square root of nine, which is three, cubed, which is 27. Always do the making smaller first. You could do um, nine cubed, which is, uh, I don't know, whatever that is, 729 or something, and then try to take the square root of that. Bad idea. Make it smaller first. You can do those in either order. And then 1 to the 3 halves is just 1. So that's uh, 26 over 24 or 13 over 12, which is B. If you didn't do so well, if you happen to be doing this one, um, if this was the first practice that you did, uh, you know, don't feel bad if you didn't get a lot of these right. We're reminding ourselves of all these different things that we know. All right, function f has first derivative. At what value is this uh, of x does f have a relative maximum? Well, maximum happens when f of x, when f prime goes, let's see, maximum would happen when it goes from positive to negative. So let's make a sign chart for that. So let's see, x equals 0 needs to be on there, and 3 needs to be on there, and I should have left room over here, negative 1 needs to be on there. And let's just test values here. So if I plug in something like lower than negative 1, like negative 2, I'd get a negative here. This is squared, so it's always positive, and I'd also get a negative here. Negative times negative is positive. And then in between negative 1 and 0, 
I'd get a negative here. This is always positive. Uh, this is also going to be positive now. So I go from positive to negative. And then between 0 and 3, plug in something like 1. So that's positive. This is always positive. And this is also positive. And then at 3 here, if we plug in something like 4, I get positive, positive, positive. That's positive again. So it looks like we change from positive to negative only at negative 1. Um, a little bit of um, wisdom, maybe looking back at this. Um, notice that the sign did not change at, at 3. And that's because this factor with the 3 in it, the reason that 3 showed up here, well, that factor is getting squared. So we do not get a sign change here because that factor is being raised to an even power. No sign change. And you can see all those different answers are options there. But the only place that it changes from positive to negative is at negative 1. Number 10, what's the sum of this series? Well, I think the trick to this one is realizing, and this is not immediately obvious, but you know when you see a series and you're like, I don't know what's going on here, you know, write out a few terms. So plugging in the 1 here, that's negative 2 over e squared, and then the next term would be plus uh, 2 squared over e cubed, and then minus 2 cubed, because the minus to an odd power, for e to the fourth, and so on. And looking at this, if you want to actually find the sum of a series, then there's a good, you got to consider the possibility that it's geometric, because we don't really know how to find the sums of a lot of series. The only way we can find the sum of a series is if it's geometric. We've got a formula for that. First term over 1 minus the multiplier. Or if it happens to match up with like one of the big four, for example, then we could know what it summed up to. So let's see. Let's simplify this. First term over 1 minus... What are we multiplying by here each time? It looks like on the top I'm multiplying by negative 2, and on the bottom I'm multiplying by e. So let's see if we can simplify that. Uh, I got negative 2 over e squared, and then the bottom 1 plus 2 over e. If you could multiply um, the top and bottom by one thing here to clean everything up, multiply the top and bottom by e squared, and that'll give me a negative 2 on the top. On the bottom, an e squared plus 2e. So that looks like answer choice B. Number 11. If the function is defined above like this, then f prime of negative 1 is. Well, let's see. Let's see. First of all, if something's going to be differentiable, um, it needs to be continuous. So the first thing we need to check is do these pieces excuse me, um, actually link up with each other? If I plug negative 1 into this, I get negative 1, 3. And if I plug negative 1 into this, Negative 1 squared is 1, so negative, then plus that, so that's 5. So these two pieces don't actually link up, um, which means that there's a jump here. This thing goes, here's the point, negative 1, 3, comes in there, that's an open circle there, right, because I don't have the equal sign, and then it comes out of there at negative 1, 5, and whatever it does, like something like this, I suppose, right? So this thing is not differentiable um, because it's not continuous. Now you could check the derivatives and it's possible that the derivatives would match up at negative 1, but even if they did, 
the answer would still be non-existent because the two pieces do not link up. Right. Right. All right. Number 12, um, let f be the function given by f of x equals 9 to the x. If four subintervals of equal length are used, what's the value of the right Riemann sum approximation going from 0 to 2? So if we do four subintervals from 0 to 2, that's 0, 1 half, 1, uh, one and a half, or 3 halves, and 2. So those would be the x values. And then f of x plugging that into this function, let's see, 9 to the 0 is 1, 9 to the 1 half is 3, it means square root, 9 to the first power is 9, 9 to the 3 halves, I think we just did that, didn't we? 27 and 9 squared is 81. So we want to do a right Riemann sum, so that means I'm going to use, like here's my four subintervals. Riemann sum is just rectangles. So the first rectangle is 1 half wide times 3 high, because this is the right endpoint, plus 1 half wide plus 9 high times 9 high, rather. And yeah, they're asking us to do this without a calculator, but it's not really that bad, especially if you factor out the 1 half, and then you just have what's 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus 81. If you're clever about that, uh, you could do 3 plus 27, that's 30, because these make 10s, right? 9 plus 81 is 90. So that's 120, half of that is 60. So... That's what we get. Moving on to next video for number 13.